Konnichiwa! I'm Alex with Lexco Moto Gymkhana. Today in this video, I want to talk to you about line selection. When you're out, uh, when you're out riding on a track or in the twisties, you're putting a lot of thought into your line. Where exactly am I starting my turn? Where is my apex? And where am I exiting? You have to think about line selection a lot in Moto Gymkhana as well. It's actually one of the most important things because this is what's going to allow you to shave off all those tenths of a second and it's going to make you a much faster rider. So transitions are important, but line selection is the other big thing in Moto Gymkhana that's going to make you quicker. So in Moto Gymkhana, you would probably think that you would want to take a nice even path around the cone, equal distance from when you start the curve and when you finish it. It's actually not like that in Moto Gymkhana. The line that you want to take around cones most of the time is you're going to want to approach them wide. And as you round them, you want to get very tight and close to the cone as you then exit. In order so, in order so that you can see this a little better, I have my little white board here. I use my little red cone. So instead of making it an even path like this, Notice that there's an equal amount of space on either side of the cone. What I am going to do instead is I'm going to approach it wide and exit tight. So I'm going to approach it nice and wide. And as I round it, I'm getting closer here. Notice that it's wider here on the entrance, closer on the exit. Oh, I'm not even in view. <laughs> you guys see that? So approaching it wide. Exiting, exiting tight. This is going to allow you to carry more speed towards the entrance. As you start to slow down, now I am tight to the cone, and now I'm going to accelerate out in a, in a slightly straighter line, not so curved. Still curved, but not so curved. In order for you guys to understand this a little bit better, I have filmed some footage of me riding. I'm going to show you an incorrect way and a correct way. All right, roll the footage. Okay, riders, so this is an incorrect example of what to do. Notice how every time I approach a cone, I'm approaching it very close, nice and tight, and it's forcing me to go wide on the exit. This is bad because it's going to force me to have to slow down even more and not carry speed around the cone and it's also going to distort my line and make me go too wide on the exit and screw me up for the next cone. This is the correct example. Notice the difference. I'm exiting tight. I'm entering wide right there. Nice and tight on the exit. This makes a slightly, a relatively slightly straighter path to the next cone on the exit, which is going to help me shave time off. Also, approaching the cone wide initially is going to help me and allow me to carry more speed at the beginning and slow down gradually as I round the cone. All right, and we're back. So I hope that that kind of makes a little bit more sense to you now. I want to explain something a little bit more as well. Depending on the type of bike you have, that's also going to affect your line selection. If you are on a bike that is torquey, has a lot of acceleration down low on the rev range, as you round the cone, you're going to want to get tighter to the cone because the tighter you get to the cone and the tighter your curve is, the more you're going to have to slow down. And th that's always you know, beneficial, getting tight around the cone because you're shortening your path around the cone, shaving off time. And if you have a torquey bike, once you're really slow and really tight around that cone, now you have the power to accelerate onto the next cone. If you have a bike like my Ninja 300, okay, it's a small displacement sport bike. It makes its power very high up in the rev range. I am going to need to take a slightly wider curve around the cone, carry more speed, because if I slow down too much and hug that cone too much, I don't really have the torque and acceleration to propel me to the next cone. I need to take a slightly wider curve so that I could stay in the power band, keep my RPMs up a little bit higher, because if I slow down too much, 
those RPMs are going to drop. I'm going to have no drive to get to the next cone. So you're going to take a slightly wider curve if you have something like a small sport bike. If you have a torquey bike, something like a naked bike, for example, those have a little bit more torque and linear power band, then you can afford to slow down a little bit more, get a little bit tighter to that cone, and accelerate to the next cone. Also, remember in the lesson where I taught the flip-flop, I told you to think about it as a two-step process, the flip and the flop. This is where this uh, is important when we're talking about line selection. The timing of everything has to be very, it has to be timed very well. If you initiate your flip too late, if I'm coming over here and I start flipping here, by the time I flop, I'm going to, it's going to force me to come really wide around the curve, the, uh, around the cone. If I time my flip-flop just right, let's say I'm coming in over here, I start flipping here, and then I flop here, now I'm going to be able to stay a little bit closer to that cone. So there's a lot of timing involved in this. Also, if you start flipping too early, let's say I'm coming over here, and I flip here, and then I flop here, now I'm going to have to stay wide in order to make it around the cone because if I start, if I flop here and I start turning here, I'm going to hit the cone. So everything has to be timed very precisely. So again, one more time. I'm coming over here. I flip here. I land here, flop. Now I'm set up to start rounding that cone nice and tight. So there's a lot of timing involved in this. A lot of thought goes into where I'm flipping, where I'm flopping. That's going to affect my line selection. Remember, approach the cone a little wider. As you round it, get a little tighter to it and exit tighter. In level two of, my, of, of this channel, I'm going to go more in depth onto what I'm doing exactly with the throttle, the brakes, and how that fits in with the line selection. This is all very important stuff for right now. Just be conscious about starting wide ending tight and time your flip-flop very carefully so that you're not having to go too wide or having uh, or, or hitting the cone because you flip-flop too early. Riders, I hope that all made sense. Until the next video, arigato and peace.